On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I built this worm gear. It's a design I found on Thingiverse and was quite a challenge to print. And it's really noisy. So here's the assembly as I finished it. And you can see where the motor just presses in place. The original design had a gear on the end of the motor and mine has just a bare shaft. So I had to adjust a few things. Mainly in the worm gear. The rest of the design is standard right from Thingiverse. I also put this little knob on the end so I could spin it by hand and start it in case it ever got caught or stalled. So here's all the pieces that I downloaded from Thingiverse. I imported them into Tinkercad and it had the main gear and then a case that held it in place and then a cover for the top of that. Then there were four flat washers to put on the end of the worm gear. I actually didn't use these. And then there was the worm gear itself. And this is where I did all the modification. The worm gear had a larger hole and also a spline inside to line up with that gear that I didn't have. So I made a minor modification to the inside and then printed a couple samples. You can see that they're not perfectly triangular. It's kind of rounded on one side and very rough. That's because I used supports to support the teeth and it really was a mess to clean up. I tried sanding it and it still didn't work. And I printed these next to each other so the head had time to cool between prints. So I thought, well, maybe it's just the color. Maybe it would be better in a different color. So I tried yellow and this time I printed three of them. And I got to a point I could see it wasn't any better. So I just canceled the print. So then I printed a base and said, okay, I'll print a base and just try to print this without support. And it still didn't help. I still had rough edges and sagging. So then I said, okay, I'll, I'll lay this on its side. And I built a little platform for the gear to sit on. And if you can look closely, some of the teeth just broke away. So I could tell that that wasn't going to work. So then I tried printing right on its side with supports just underneath. And it looked really good on top, nicely triangulated, but on the bottom, it was a mess. But I was encouraged to see the top of this gear. It was really, really clean. And when I compared it to the previous one, so much better. So I knew I had to do something different to get a better gear. So I went back to Tinkercad and made the modifications I wanted. I still had the small shaft going through the center for the motor but I added a larger bearing end and end cap that had a fillet on the end. This way I had a hand crank to start it. Then I grouped that together as one unit. And from there I was ready to modify it by splitting it in half. So I took the unit, I duplicated it in Tinkercad, and then I cut the two pieces in half with a hollow block or a hole block. You can see I cut it right down the middle. So now I grouped them together and now I had two pieces to print. That's what I sent to the printer. So the idea is once they were printed I could glue them together with acetone. So here are the two finished pieces. They're flat on one side but the gear on top is just really really close to perfect. I got a little extra material I just need to clean up but you can see these fit together almost perfectly. So as I spin it, you can see there's a little bit of rough edge. I'll probably have to sand it a little bit smooth. But here's the two pieces, and I've got the channel for the motor shaft running right through the middle. So now I pulled out the acetone. I got this at our local CVS convenience store, but you can get it pretty much anywhere. But what you want is 100% pure acetone. So I poured some into the cap, and then I just dipped a Q-tip into the acetone. And the point was to use that as a brush to rub it on all points of the gear itself. So every point that touched, I wanted acetone. What the acetone does is soften up the plastic. It really makes it sticky. And then I can squeeze these two together and make one solid gear. But you want to get 
make sure you get enough on it and that you can see it or actually feel it with the Q-tip getting sticky. That's when you know you're ready. So I put a little bit extra on the, the first gear so they're ready to squeeze together. And that's all I really do. You just line them up and squeeze. And it doesn't take long. Now, the acetone will stick to itself and it'll start to harden pretty quick as the acetone dries. It didn't take very long and it was already sticking pretty solid. In this case I didn't get it exactly perfect for this example but it was pretty close. Now the way my print bed is set to kind of smush that first layer down so it sticks, I ended up with a little bit of a uh, pointy edge where the two met. But all I did was take a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded that down to more of a rounded uh, shape. And that worked pretty well. So here's the final result and it looks pretty good. Now let's go back and look at the original gear that I did. And you can see that the way it fits with the other gear, that the triangular teeth are so much better than what I originally was getting with the rounded teeth. And the acetone uh, method worked pretty good. I got a pretty good gear out of it. But I just didn't put enough all the way across it because I got splitting down where the motor is. So it never fully hardened down there and I don't know if I didn't put enough acetone or if I just didn't let it dry long enough. But even then, it still pinched down on the motor. I ended up putting a rubber band to hold the motor in place, but it worked pretty good. Wait, I got the motor, the gear in the wrong way. So it worked pretty good and I could now spin it by hand just to, to check things. And if it ever stalled, I had that ability. But once I tested it, it worked really well. So that's it. That's my motor control project. And I hope I showed you a little trick there with the split gear and the acetone. I'll put a link to all these files in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. So I got a lot of great projects planned for 2015 and some really great news coming up. So stay tuned. See you next time.